I'm Fred Minnick, and I would rather pluck the nose hairs of a skunk in a phone booth than drink vodka. And I'm Stephen Fonte, and I'd rather walk to uh, the distillery from Louisville, that's an hour and 20 minute drive, than to, um, to drink vodka in the summertime. Welcome back to uh, the Curation Desk. I am joined with uh, my good friend, Stephen Fonte. How are you, man? Good, good. Good to, good see, to you. see you, Fred. All right, so you, you work for Limestone Branch. Tell us what you do there. I'm the executive bourbon steward in residence, which uh, works with the public as they come in. Hospitality, mainly in the front of the house. I work with the back of the house some. Main job in, in what I do is the barrel house and, and barrel house picks. and going through and tasting people on single barrel bourbons and mm -hmm. uh, traveling the nation as uh, national brand ambassador for the distillery, uh, doing shows and events and functions. It keeps me quite busy. You work hard. I do. So you're a coffee man. Tell us about your coffee background. Shoot, 25 years of it. I was uh, at John Connie Coffee Company and I started out in the route service division uh, delivering coffee throughout the west end of Louisville. I built my way up through into sales and then uh, I had a real passion for our tea. And our tea program, I took it national. So I became the tea sommelier with John Connie Coffee Company. And then I left there and I went to work for Consumer's Choice Bob Patterson, who okay. is still here in town as yeah. a CPA. And I became Golden Cup certified when Royal Cup took over. And Golden Cup certification is one of the highest certification in coffee cupping, nosing, and tasting standards and in brewing standards. There's a lot of similarities uh, that you can bring from coffee to whiskey. Absolutely. What makes a good cup of coffee? Uh, starting out with great beans. Mm -hmm. Number one thing is to, uh, to source your, your beans in, in the smaller farms over in Costa Rica and Guatemala. You get in with those uh, plantation owners and they only own a few hectares. Build relationships with those guys. Uh, once you've got good sourced green, then uh, the rest of it is all artisan resting. You get that right and you've got yourself a great cup of coffee. In terms of what you should taste in the coffee, what should you taste? No bitters. That's what you shouldn't taste. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I'm the best at is picking up the stinkers. I'm not so great at picking up what's wonderful and mild and smooth. I'm more adamant about picking up things that are off tasting. Is Starbucks good? I drink Starbucks, I do. It is a good cup of coffee. It's an Arabican cup of coffee. I like a little bit more mild roast and most of their stuff is really dark roasted. Mm -hmm. They want you to buy the milk. They're really a milk producer at Starbucks. They sell more cappuccinos and lattes than they do anything else. You make more profit off of a cappuccino or a latte than you do off a cup of coffee. So they're not really interested in just selling coffee by the cup, in my opinion. There you go, folks. The inside scoop of Starbucks scandal right here. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? The most important thing here is that you have to pick out an ascot. Everyone who comes on the show, including my Sweet. wife, has to, has to wear an ascot. So we've got a few here. This one with the most color. How about oh, that? Oh, yeah, it's a Glen Cairn. Yeah, that's actually one I customized. It goes good with, with, uh, with peak ties. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, going to clear the desk. And Sweet. you know how to tie an ascot? Heck no, I don't know how to tie an ascot. Are you ready for this? Sure. All right, let's do it. So bring it, bring one side down lower. Now, you know how to do a double Windsor? Windsor. Okay. Same X. Yeah, so do, uh, do a Windsor. Go for it like you would do a Windsor. Okay, and now, all right, now put it over. There you go. And now. I'm running out of tie here. That's that's what we want. And so now you cinch it up. You got it a little loose, but you, you can we can live with that. And now tuck it inside. There we go. Just stuck, yeah, stick that on, all of it in there. There we go. And boom, look at that. All right, right there is an ascot. You got a little puffing out on the side here, but uh -huh. you're good. And there you have it, folks. Who did funk it? I'm all done with my coffee. It's time for some whiskey. Ah, let's uh, good. let's start with someone who's one of your competitors. Sounds good. Town Branch. Now, Town Branch is made in Lexington. You know, they're they're making bourbon. They're making single malts. Oh, look at that! Rolling it around. You got your process here. Everybody's got their own process when it comes to tasting whiskey. It really is true. 
a lot of people come in and sit down and I'll tell them the way that I'm going to do your tasting and they'll be like, no, that's not how we do it. You don't want to break the rhythm. You want to do it however they like to do it. Now this smells like it's kind of like we got a grain truck coming in and then, you know, there's a little bit of uh, sorghum right behind it. So this is obviously young. Sweet. Caramel bomb. You're really good at finding the, the shit notes in coffee. I feel very similar in, uh, in whiskey, like that's the first thing I look for is to make sure nothing tastes like a butane lighter or, or drywall. And because I have, I taste a lot of them, taste a lot of those things or smell them. Those are things that I often pick up and I don't get any of that here with the, with the Town Branch. Nope. So this is, uh, this is clean, so there's no, uh, there's no turd notes, there's, no, there's nothing in there that smells like a fermented latrine at Fort Benning, Georgia, which if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. You know, when I was in the army, there was actually a guy who dropped an M16 Ooh. in the in the latrine. The NCOs made him get in there and, and, and dig it out. I'm pretty sure that they couldn't do that today, even in the army. Ooh. Calvin Ponte, Army Ranger, right now, Afghanistan. Oh wow! He's my nephew. I'm so proud of him. Thanks for your service. He's doing incredible things. The I know Ranger's that. Ranger's a badass. Yes, he is. Yes, that's very nice. Very so smooth. Yeah, I mean, easy finish. to me, it's a, this is a kind of a whiskey that's in the league of like Evan Williams Black Label or Jim Beam. You know, probably probably a notch above Jim Beam White Label and just below Evan Williams Black Label. But it, it's definitely in the conversation of like, you know what? Have it on your bar. So I definitely recommend this for having it on your bar, for having um, something that's out there. The most prominent note in here for me, corn on the cob, with a little bit slather of butter. So, still very grain forward, but there's still some sweetness in there. Uh, it's got kind of a buttery you note, know, but uh, yeah. Very good whiskey, very good representation, and I can't wait to see what Town Branch is going to do as the years compile into their stocks. Definitely moving in the right direction. I call one like that a daily driver. <laughs> it's soft, it's easy. Yeah. You come off a yeah. long day, big yeah. drive, Mm -hmm. This is the go-to right there. This, you get Daily home, driver. put your feet up. Get your Glen Karen. Get your Glen Karen. Sit back and sip. Maybe fire up a cigar. Table whiskey, Daily Driver. Town Branch. All right, so let's go to Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey. Now, this is a Japanese whiskey. Japanese whiskey, oh. it's its own blowing up world. In fact, I would say this is the hottest whiskey in the world at the moment. You got people like Yamazaki, the 18-year-old sherry cast finish is, is, is legendary. One of my favorite all-time whiskeys. A lot of the Japanese whiskey is not available. However, the Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey is widely available. And I remember being at its launch in, uh, in New Orleans and tasting this for the first time. And I was like, this reminds me a little bit of like you know, some bourbons I've had. Anytime you see like grain whiskey and like the scotches and the Japanese whiskeys, there's a good bet that corn is going to be the uh, major player in that recipe. So this is one of the more widely available Japanese whiskeys. You should be able to find this wherever um, you buy your whiskey. Um, now, interestingly, they have a screw cap. I actually don't mind screw caps. What I don't like, I don't like synthetic corks. I like real natural cork. You feel like a whiskey changes over time in the bottle? Once, uh, once you've opened it and, uh, and you've got a cork, do you feel like that it, uh, it changes its... Uh, so what's interesting, you know, the cork comes from an oak tree, just, just like uh, the barrel. So it has the same, a lot of the same properties as, as, as a barrel. And for a long time, you know, the cork would actually influence the spirit. They figured out kind of like the ways to, to treat the cork and get it in a way where it's much more neutral and it won't have, you know, any kind of long-term kind of tannic effect on, on, on the whiskey. The thing about it is, like, and I've opened bottles that are 100 years old. They take a look at this, like this little cap right here. Right. Um, now this is anecdotal. I don't have anything that's scientifically proven, but that little like wax film right there and that plastic over time, if this were to sit in just a random basement, that right there, it could down. It, it break down. And I had tasted bottles that were perfectly stored, screw cap, fit in the basement or wherever for 40 years, and I tasted plastic. And I believe it's just that little film like right there. 
And so that's why I think from a long-term storage perspective, cork is still your best bet. Now, interestingly, Town Branch actually used to have a glass closure. And I would say if they can get that seal right, that might be a good one too. Never break down. Yeah, never but break down. But the seal down. needs to be great. Yeah, needs to be great. And then when you try to pull it out, you know, I mean, you could, yeah. you could shatter. Ooh. That wouldn't be good. No, I'd strain it. Put it through a coffee filter. Drink it. <laughs> this is definitely sweet. There's hints of like honey and like lemon here for me. Oh, hibiscus. Oh, I'm mm. picking up plant light notes on the front end of it. Very light. Wow. You know, the corn is the predominant grain here, but it doesn't taste like bourbon. It can range from like their distillation techniques for how they're cooking the grains to how they're distilling it. And this is one of my major issues with the Japanese whiskey world. They're not very transparent. They blend a lot of uh, spirits that were distilled outside of Japan. They also bring stuff in from Scotland. And I think what the Japanese are absolutely brilliant blenders. I look forward to the day when, when we have absolute transparency in the Japanese whiskey world. To that point, I have found that Nika is one of the more transparent distillers or blenders that are out there. And they're imported by the Anchor Distilling Company, the same people who have like Anchor Steam, like the, the beer. I've drank a few of those. One of my favorite beers, especially when I'm on the West Coast. I don't dislike it at all. I like it a lot. To me, this is a must buy. I gotta get this. If you're in the mood for a break outside of uh, American whiskey, but you still want some of those same notes, I think the Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey is a must buy for you. I would drink this with a Maduro cigar. I would go with a dark cigar because it's got such a light uh, taste to this mm -hmm. that the heavier the cigar would be, would really complement each other. I'm actually drinking this for a dish that would normally call for like a Chardonnay. Uh -huh. I want to pair this with like a, like a really nice uh, salmon and maybe like a, an Italian pasta, like an Italian pasta, the, the white sauce right. styles. Fettuccine. Fettuccine, yeah, fettuccine Alfredo. So very cheese forward. Yeah. I have to agree that's different than anything I've drank in the whiskey world since I've been doing this and prior to. So now for the moment of the hour, we're gonna have ourselves a little Yellowstone Branch. Limestone Branch. A lot of people ask us that. Well, what's Limestone Branch and what's Yellowstone? Why are they different? <laughs> Yellowstone's the child. Limestone's the distillery. Well, it's important to know it too that Stephen Beam is the owner of Limestone Branch. His family, the Beam family, Yes, that Beam family uh, once owned Yellowstone. So this is a very important brand to Stephen Beam's heritage. <sighs> it's a good, good sound and cork pop. Plus, look at Well, this is a, uh, a nine and 12 year mingle. So you've got nine year barrels and you got 12 year barrels. 12 year barrels that came from the barrel house, came out of the top of the barrel house, had very little juice left in them. Went in 53, came out 16. That is bourbon concentrate. The color on it proves it. The very first thing Mr. Bean taught me when I started working for him was take a look at the color in the legs. And that one's got longer hang time than Michael Jordan. It's uh, the Sniggle Shits. That's what it is. The Sniggle Shits? That's what it is. <laughs> Nine and 12 year mingle. Wait, is this finished in anything? Normally, nope, it normally, is not finished in anything. This is a normally your, your mingle. So normally your uh, limited releases uh, are finished in something. And it's a true story. We have done uh, three different finished uh, bourbons recently mm -hmm. in the limiteds. Okay. The 2016 was finished in a toasted wood wine cask which gave it a toasted wood finish like no other bourbon I'd ever tasted. A brand new wine cask, nothing had ever been in it, toasted wood finish. I miss it a lot. Mm -hmm. 2017, sure. what did he do with the cask? He took it to the cooperage, had a one char fired through that 2016 bourbon while it was wet. And then he finished the 2017 in that cask. The 2017 limited edition was bourbon on bourbon. What do you okay. do with the cask? He took it back to the cooperage immediately after the dump wet. That gold medal award winning 2017 bourbon was then fired at a three char through the center of it. The 2018 limited was bourbon on bourbon on bourbon. That's the favorite thing that we've produced so far. Do you know what the mash bills are on the, on, on the bourbons? Because these are bourbons that you all would have purchased from somewhere else and aged at your place? That is bit. correct. Our mash bill on Yellowstone Select is 75% white corn, 13% rye, and the rest in malted barley. Some of that distillate made it to this bottle, to 2018's bottle. Okay. So that was the first time Limestone Branch Love had really passed the lips of all Americans, the 2018. This particular bottle does not have our juice in it, and so the mash bill on it is similar 
but not exact. Probably distilled by cousin. That's what I can tell you. And, but it would not have been white corn. They would have definitely used yellow corn on that one. I would think so. Yeah. Most distilleries do not go to that specification on their corn. There's only a handful that do white corn. That's right. Okay, here comes the moment, moment of truth. The moment of truth. It's 101 proof, and you'll never believe that this is 101 when you drink it. It's so smooth. I'll figure out if I like this. And if you don't, give me the rest of your glass. <laughs> You got your pocket knife put up, right? I do. <laughs> this reminds me of some stuff that was distilled in the 1990s. This has a, a viscosity to it that's very different than a lot of the bourbons that are coming out today. Kind of like the first kind of like feeling that I get with this whiskey is it's like it hits the sides of my palate and it kind of go down and then back up around. It's a very, very, very unique mouthfeel and kind of how it's traveling all around. And then the flavors uh, that I get out of this, I mean, the most predominant note that I am getting is pie crust. That is a really good note to get. I commend you all for this. He, he drove a, an hour about here, or about here, about something like that. This bottle's a little cold. That can influence how a whiskey will taste. So I would recommend chilling this for a little bit because <laughs> this is a good sip. This is a good sip of whiskey. This one I would go exactly the opposite of a Maduro cigar and go with a mild, something very light to go with that. You know heavier. what I want with this? I want nothing around me, my phone completely away. Mm -hmm. I want some classic literature. Nice. And I, and I want a fire and I want absolute quiet while I get into a good book. And I gotta tell you, I miss reading. I got two kids. I miss reading books. I think I write more than I read. You need to duck and out I'm... for a 48 hour cabin trip. That's what you need to do. You know where I'm headed? Oklahoma. Oh, my home state. I know. Yeah. I'm going to Lake Ten Killer. I got a three bedroom, 14 bed cabin okay, on so Lake Ten Killer. You... So I'm just picturing you like, uh, you're taking your shirt off, oh God, and you're don't jumping into that. you're jumping into Ten Killer, yeah. and you're noodling, because that's, that's why people do a Ten Killer. Yeah, uh, I'm staying away from the damn snakes. Got, yeah, the snakes are real there. They are real. Yeah, you don't want to mess They'll around. They'll take with that. you out. Looking forward to getting back and and, Man, and seeing my cousin and just. That's a good family. time. That's a good time there. Just don't get bitten by a snake. I'm gonna try not to. I'm gonna wear extra tall boots. More than that though, they go for the thighs. Mm. Mm hmm. Don't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I'll leave my knife in my pocket. <laughs> and that's not why I'm saying I would like I liked it. I was just preparing myself. Because the nose wasn't winning me over. It wasn't until I tasted it. What's the price point point on this? That's about uh, $90 in some stores, $110 in other stores. It runs around $90 to $90 to $110, somewhere in there. Damn. Yeah. That's the price for bourbon's going though. Well, I think that'll do it for this episode of The Curation Desk. Did you have a favorite? Yeah, the Ascot. I'm keeping it. Uh, no, can, I'm kidding. No, you can uh, have it. I really like the Japanese bourbon. Thanks for turning me on to that. I'm going to get a bottle of that myself, especially for the fact that coffee grain. I mean, come on. Yeah. This is my two careers blended into one bottle. Soft and easy. That's right. So there you have it, folks. Stephen Fonte actually liked coffee grain whiskey over his own. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Put close. I did ask you. Your it's favorite. good. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for Cheers. coming in. This is really good. It's one of the things about being an ambassador. Whiskey. I'm going to need a ride home.